with both Britain and France being separated by 20 miles of English Channel. There have been numerous proposals to link the countries together by tunnel, going far back as 1802. The link nearly came a reality in the 1970s when there was agreement to construct a tunnel. However, in 1975, the Labour government pulled Britain out of the proposal. It was in 1981 when an agreement between British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher and French President Francois Mitterrand would create a group tasked at evaluating the possibilities for a channel crossing. However, the British government was not interested in funding a channel crossing, but they were open to the option of a privately funded project, which subsequently the Channel Tunnel was to be. In 1985, Proposed schemes for a cross-channel link were put forward which included the use of suspension bridges, road tunnels, tunnels between artificial islands and a rail tunnel. The rail tunnel was proposed by British-run Channel Tunnel Group and French-run France Manche. The Channel Tunnel Group was an amalgamation of two banks and five construction companies, whilst France Manche consisted of three banks and five construction companies. Both entities would be linked together under the trans Monge link. This meant that 10 construction companies were responsible for the design and construction of the tunnel, with the banks having the job of securing private finance. Public opinion at the time favoured a road tunnel, however it was decided that a rail tunnel would be the preferred option. Multiple reasons for this option were cited, including being the most likely to attract sufficient private investment to construct the tunnel, which by 1985 had amounted to £2.6 billion. The tunnel was to be a build, operate, own, transfer, also known as a boot project. The tunnel would be built by Transmonge Link, with the financing for the project being secured by the company Eurotunnel. Once the tunnel was built, Eurotunnel was given a 65-year operating concession in which it was responsible for operating the tunnel and would receive the income made by the tunnel to pay off the initial capital. The plan was to construct two rail tunnels, 7.6 metres in diameter and a 4.8 metre service tunnel which would run in between. The three tunnels are connected together by cross passages and piston relief ducts to balance the air pressure in the tunnel. Both countries would simultaneously see the tunnel underneath the channel, Britain starting at Folkestone and the French at Calais, where they would both join their tunnels together in the middle of the channel. Surveying of the ground was undertaken 20 years before construction and confirmed that a tunnel was feasible due to the presence of chalk marl which is conducive to tunnelling. This meant that the majority of the tunnel was to be bored through the chalk marl. Tunnelling commenced in 1988 with the tunnels being constructed using 11 boring machines to excavate the ground, with the French side using 5 machines and the British side using 6. The tunnels would then be lined by a combination of cast iron segments bolted together and pre-cast concrete rings. The service tunnel bored ahead of the rail tunnels to determine the current boring conditions. At peak of construction, 15,000 people were employed on the project. The initial tunneling was completed in 1990, but it was four years later, on the 14th of November 1994, when the tunnel opened to passenger services. The length of the line was 31 and a quarter miles, with 24 miles being under the sea, at an average depth of 45 metres below the seabed. Going off 1985 prices, the tunnel cost a total of £4.65 billion at an 80% cost overrun, with the reasons for this including increased safety and security demands. Since its opening, the Channel Tunnel has grown into an important transport link carrying both freight and passengers. Passengers are carried by both high-speed rail Eurostar services and through a vehicle shuttle service with both modes carrying nearly 21 million passengers in 2016. In 1994, the Channel Tunnel was named one of the seven modern wonders of the world by American Society of Civil Engineers and illustrates the ability of applying successful engineering solutions no matter the environment. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more, please like and subscribe for future videos. Also, if you have any specific civil engineering projects you would like to know about, please mention them in the comments. This has been a civil conversation and I will see you in the next video.